I'd like to call the meeting at to order at 638. Any adjustments to the agenda this evening? Seeing none, motion to accept the board meeting agenda as presented. All those in favor? Consideration of uh, board meeting minutes, January 26, 2016. Second. Any corrections, changes? Seeing none, all those in favor? We have nothing on the consent agenda this evening. Uh, no presentations. Just the girls basketball is tipping off at seven. Playoff game versus Old Orchard. Anybody in the public wish to speak this evening? Report from the superintendent. Um, in your packets are the oil bids that were submitted. And you can see that we received a rate from the Tidewater Oil Company of 1.429 which was the lowest and has been accepted, um, down from $2.08 last year, which will, on the 93,000 gallons, will save us $60,350. So, savings right there on our budget. Um, Mr. Clum and I met with Head Start uh, last week somewhere around there, regarding the information on the possibility of the Stockton Springs Elementary School closing. Uh, we wanted to uh, hear from Head Start as far as some of the things that were uh, questions in their minds. Um, before I do that, I do want to tell you that Head Start, I know I got it here somewhere, um, did have their federal audit done uh, on the process up there and they were proud to share the results and they did not have a single deficiency noted which is not very common amongst Head Start programs. The concerns that they had are things that they are going to check on is the size of the rooms at CS Port Elementary School. Um, they need to check those out and therefore the number that would be permitted in there for Head Start. Another question they had was they need to check with the uh, feds on half day versus all day. So they'll be getting back to us on that. And the third thing was um, the menus at the CS Board Elementary School, if they would match up with the federal regulations for Head Start. So those are three additional points that, you know, that we'll need to look at when we um, consider any type of action on that. Other information from the superintendent is uh, Deanna and I, along with staff and administrators, are working towards getting the budget ready to present to you on uh, next board meeting so that we can start the budget work in March. I do want to let you know that the preliminary ED 279s were put out by the Department of Education and right now it's showing that RSU 20 would be having a less amount of state subsidy of $356,127.64 um, meeting with the some of the superintendents and also if, from the Bangor Daily News and also the Portland Sunday Telegram, we're one of 131 districts around the state where money is going down from state subsidy after we were told that it would be flat funding. So um, main school management along with superintendents are asking questions and breaking down our 279s line by line. So hopefully we'll have more information for you uh, next time we meet. I will tell you that one of the things that has changed is the mill rate was increased 
which has a definite effect on your subsidy. Uh, that's all over the state. Also, there was some um, reductions in special ed costs and with me for one second. And transportation and also on the tech center. So there's some things that we need to look at along and we're going to make sure that they have the student count right as well because that can have an effect your enrollment as well as valuation. So this, remember those are the preliminaries and those do change and we'll keep you updated on those. I did meet with Walter Beasley on the free lunch for all students. I met with him last week along with RSU 25 which is Bucksport. Uh, looking at our free and reduced current is that we have a good chance of qualifying. Uh, one of the things that I know I gave these to the other board members um, that we have to look at is that revenues would go down obviously because kids would be getting uh, free and reduced lunch. Also though that the amount of USDA uh, products would go up as well as some of the rates. And there are some other effects of it so we'll be looking into that as well. Under executive session, we'll be reporting out on mediation and negotiations. And then the last thing is I just wanted to update you on the tech center. Uh, we had a meeting today of the three superintendents and the director. Uh, we went over the tech center calendar, which as I mentioned last time, for us it's five dissimilar days, which falls within the state, state limits. And the other is we went over the there. 2016 and 2017 school budget which shows a decrease in their overall budget but an increase in the assessment to RSU 20 and I told Mr. Uh, Michaud that uh, we would be taking a look at that and coming back with some questions both Deanna and I have a little inside information when it comes to the tech budget so we are going to be looking at that line by line uh, to find out why some of those things uh, happen. And the last bit of good news that I have for you is that uh, our unemployment trust fund rate set by Maine School Unemployment uh, will remain at 0.7 and we're actually getting a return this year of $6,318. So, got a little bit of Good news. It's not going to balance off the 279s, but, and I'll answer any questions that anybody might have. Seeing none, thank you. Committee reports? None. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. Our finance committee met tonight. Uh, no towns in the rears for their payment. Uh, our budget is at about 51 to 52 percent. R remaining funds and uh, it's about 8% higher than what we would have uh, the debt services paid on the Stockton School which For has a sure. lower percentage on that but that's why and uh, we discussed uh, working with the food service people to help lower the cost of the food and as Chris suggested that uh, getting everybody a, a free lunch might help do that also. Financially, we're in good shape. Thank you, Percy. Moving on to old business, uh, second reading of the proposed school calendar for 1617. That's in your packet again this week, I believe, this month. Uh, there's been no changes, correct? Correct. I entertain a motion to approve. So moved. All those in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Informational 11.2 informational update on the requested studies available space at Sierra Elementary School and Stockton Springs Elementary School. Uh, Larry and I took a walk around the school today, and uh, 
And there is, should my green light be on? Or? Yeah. Yeah, is that better? And we walked around the school and there is one classroom that is completely open, uh, right now used for auxiliary type of things, with a bathroom and a storage closet. And there is a second room that would uh, mean moving out the technology integrator, if that was the area that we would look at that, which also has a bathroom and storage space. Uh, accessible to the playground and so we looked at that as far as room availability then we started looking at some things that we would need to uh, sort of break down if the decision is made to move to C.S. Port Elementary School uh, such as a lunch schedule uh, would they look at PE and art would the gym be available the read my own writing here um, where the parents would pick up where the parents would drop off uh, would it involve more secretarial work you know items that you don't think about until you actually start sitting there and start breaking it down and so we're going to um, wait to see on the 23rd what folks are thinking about and uh, start to draw some definitive answers to some of those questions and we encourage any other questions that people might have that Larry and I have not thought of. Any questions for Mr. Downing? So just to clarify, strictly speaking from a spatial standpoint, plenty of room, logistically it could work. The other questions that start to put pressure on that is what the flow would look like in terms of lunch, whether or not they're also being shuttled in and out of lunch, PE. Would that start to impress on the schedules and max out our PE and lunch? Not necessarily. The PE is uh, availability two days a week. Mm -hmm. The gym is not um, used for PE. Um, same thing with the art room. That's available three days of the week. So that's not as so there's capacity there, is what you're saying, yep. There is, uh, and we are looking at setting up a lunch schedule and how that would work out. Um, that's what we're going to on the table okay. to address, um, the, again, the flow of traffic, drop off, pick up, mm. and then adding that capacity on with, as the staff said, one secretary at the front. Uh, and we are going to be moving his resources he uses um, for the after school programs as well. Uh, trying to find a spot for him, which he's done in the past. So that would be back in the future. Yeah, I mean, I would think if there's any area of greatest stressing, it would be in that space. Uh, he's certainly got room to breathe in there, but where he would move some of that stuff, I'm not certain. That's what we were talking about okay. today. And the other thing that um, you know, going outside the building is the playground requirements of pre-K versus uh, the other kids there. And another, you know, it's an item that really we have to look at as well as some of the, sp the special ed uh, requirements as well as the amount of services that would be needed. Isn't the square footage for the pre-K different than ours also? Yes. The, the K through five? Yeah, that's all. I the number ratio. I don't need that. The number ratio is different, isn't it? We talked about 16 being, uh, there was the number 16 that was brought up. Uh, they're serving more than that right now because mm -hmm. of the space that they have. Mm -hmm. That would be a concern, a consideration. Another consideration um, with the space is, um, you know, what it's going to require for equipment or stuff that they're bringing over. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of questions. There really are a lot of questions that need to be asked. And I will tell you what I said to Larry is that, you know, on February 23rd, if the board 
votes either way, that's really where we need to then consider um, sort of rearranging the apple cart, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So just to clarify one point you made there, did we definitively determine whether or not they need a fenced-in playground area? That's one of the questions that we've asked. Okay, so that's on the list of things you yep. want to clarify. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Moving on to new business, consideration approval of the following coaching nominations. <clears throat> John Fry, varsity baseball coach. Mike Vasilovskis, varsity track coach. Jeff Golder, middle school baseball coach. R.J. Robinson, unpaid baseball volunteer. Mel Grant, unpaid baseball volunteer. I think before we left that meeting down there and the personnel that we we're going to make a recommendation to take them all as one with the stipulation that the volunteers had to fill out the correct form. That's your motion? Yes. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Who seconded? Sorry. Bill? Right here. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Moving on to 12.2, executive session for the purpose of discussing litigation pending and com contemplated pursuant to 1 MRSA 406E. And we'll also be in a staying executive session for uh, labor contract negotiation pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056D. There will be no motion or action taken afterwards. Tony, before Thank you. Further, you skip 11.1, second reading of the calendar. Oh, we did that. We did do that? Yeah. Yep. Motion by Percy, seconded oh, by Bill. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So I read that in the form of a motion. The executive sessions. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you for coming, Pete. Thank you. Thanks, Dick. <clears throat> 